This is Google's top tier phone of 2023, the Pixel 8 Pro. What's new here? And could this be the flagship you should be looking out for? I'm Will for GSM Marina, and let's find out in our Pixel 8 Pro review. The Google Pixel phones are quite well known for their stock Android software experience, powerful cameras, and AI-based features. The new Pixel 8 Pro brings some nice updates, including a new Super Actua display, an improved chipset, and extended software support. The camera system has been revamped too, with some new lenses and a new ultra-wide cam. Design-wise, the biggest change is that the Pixel 8 Pro's display is flat, not curved. Either type of screen may have its advantages, but many prefer a flat one that's more immune to accidental touches. Besides that, the design is similar to the previous generation, with an aluminum frame and glass back, featuring a visor-like camera bump. The back has a matte finish, and the visor and frame are glossy on the Pro model. That's the inverse of what you get on the vanilla Pixel 8, with its glossy back and matte frame. The Pixel 8 Pro has Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protecting both the front and back, as well as IP68 rated dust and water resistance. Like I mentioned, Google calls the 8 Pro's new screen a super actual display. It's a 6.7 inch LTPO OLED with a 120 Hz refresh rate. With a pixel density of 489 ppi, this display is quite sharp. And compared to last year, Google has trimmed down the bezels here. The colors can be quite accurate as well, and there's support for HDR10 Plus video. The Pixel 8 Pro's display brightness is impressive. We maxed out at around 950 nits with the manual slider, and this boosted to 1600 nits in auto mode when exposed to bright light. That's even better than the vanilla model, which is also one of the brightest phones around. This display's refresh rate is quite adaptive in order to save energy. You get that smooth 120Hz when interacting with the phone and swiping, and it will dial down as low as 1Hz when idling. The Pixel 8 Pro has a pair of stereo speakers, and they have good loudness. The sound quality is great, well balanced, with some bass, clear vocals, and nice treble. You can hear for yourself with the provided link. The Pixel 8 Pro has an under-display fingerprint reader for biometrics, and it seems even faster and more accurate than last year's. And there are plenty of storage options, 128, 256, or 512 gigs, or a whole terabyte on board. That's not expandable through microSD though. The Google Pixels are the first phones to come out with the new Android 14 out of the box. And here you get the pure Android experience, exactly as Google intended. Cosmetically, Android 14 is the same, but it brings some new features, like a more customizable lock screen. You can also create your own unique wallpapers with plenty of styles, words, and colors to work with. In addition to a regional language, Android 14 gives you the option to choose a different measurement system and date format. Android 14 also supports 10-bit HDR images and lossless audio with wired headphones. And privacy has been improved. For example, when sending images to someone, the app won't have access to your whole gallery like before. Now let's talk about the Pixel's own AI-based features. Keep in mind that some of these are region-specific and won't work everywhere. The Live Translate feature is even faster now. Its interpreter mode can translate a conversation in real time between two people, if that language is supported. The Call Screening feature, where the Google Assistant can take a call for you or transcribe robocall options, is also better and faster this year. Thanks to the Pixel's AI, you can easily extract text from apps or even images. There's a new, more powerful Magic Editor within the Photos app. It offers advanced functions like removing objects from the photo and changing the sky. A feature unique to the Pixel 8 Pro is a thermometer thanks to a new temperature sensor located next to the cameras. It doesn't do much at the moment because it's not very accurate to begin with, but maybe we'll see new uses for it down the line. And last but definitely not least, Google promises both OS and security updates for the next 7 years on the new Pixels, that's more than any other manufacturer. The Pixel 8 Pro comes with Google's 4 nanometer Tensor G3 chipset, just like you get on the vanilla Pixel 8. Compared to the previous Tensor chip, there's a new graphics processor, a new ISP, and a new TPU which handles the AI-related tasks. In benchmarks, the Pixel 8 Pro is clearly more powerful than last year's model, both in CPU and graphics tasks. And as you'd expect, the numbers are about the same as on the regular Pixel 8. These numbers are far from class-leading though. 
Competitors running on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 handily outperform the Pixels, which are more on par with last year's flagships. The Pixel 8 Pro brings more than enough power for your everyday use, but if you're looking for a phone optimized for heavy gaming, this may not be the best choice. This point is driven home even further when looking at the phone's lackluster thermal management. There was significant thermal throttling during our prolonged stress test, with plenty of dips and spikes. Even the compact vanilla model did a better job here. The Pixel 8 Pro has a 5,050 mAh battery, and the battery life here is okay, but falls behind its relevant competitors, with an overall endurance rating of just 90 hours. The charging speed also isn't very exciting. With Google's official 30-watt charger, we were able to top up the Pixel 8 Pro from 0 to 53% in half an hour. A full charge took an hour and 23 minutes. There's also support for wireless charging. Now we have the cameras. There's a 50 megapixel main cam, a 48 megapixel 5x telephoto zoom, and a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera. There are a few upgrades here. Both the main cam and telephoto cam have new lenses with wider apertures, and the ultra wide is all new. Because of pixel binning, the main cam produces 12.5 megapixel photos, and they're excellent. There's a lot of detail, and while there is some extra sharpening, the rendition is still more pleasant than many rivals. The look is overall contrasty, with slightly dark shadows. And you get dependable white balance and likable color saturation. Unlike the Pixel 8, the 8 Pro allows you to take photos at the camera's full 50 megapixel resolution. These shots can come out with some extra detail, at the expense of a larger file size. There's a 2x digital zoom on the viewfinder, and these are pretty decent. Intricate details like foliage may come out a bit soft, but in general the scenes look pretty good. Portraits come out at 2x zoom by default. With good lighting, you get a sharp, detailed subject. The edge detection isn't infallible though. In low light conditions, the main cam takes excellent photos with the help of night mode processing. They have a very nicely balanced exposure with well-preserved highlights and just the right amount of boost in the shadows. The colors are well saturated and the white balance is dependable. Detail is generally very good, though the Pixel's noise reduction would sometimes wipe out detail in certain textures like asphalt. If you disable night mode, darker scenes may come out underexposed. Better lit scenes won't be as bad, without a big difference compared to the night mode shots. 4K videos from the main camera look great, with plenty of detail and nice dynamic range and color saturation. Video stabilization is very good at smoothing out the footage too. At night, the main cam captures good detail in its videos, and there's a wide dynamic range and nice color saturation. Next, we have the 5x telephoto zoom, one of the main advantages the 8 Pro has over the vanilla model. These zoomed shots are nicely sharp, with great detail and definition. The new optics appear to make a nice improvement over last year's 7 Pro. The telephoto cam doesn't mind shooting in darkness, and with night mode active the shots come out great, with low noise and nice tonal development. The 5x telephoto produces excellent footage, with nice detail, great colors, good exposure, and wide dynamic range. The upgraded ultra-wide on the Pixel 8 Pro captures excellent photos. The detail is great, and sharpness is preserved almost all the way to the extreme corners. Dynamic range and colors are also good. Since the ultra-wide has autofocus, you can use it to take close-ups and macro shots. These look great, even sharper and more detailed than what the vanilla model's ultra-wide can manage. In low light, with the night mode active, the ultra-wide does a good job. The highlights are decently contained, shadows are boosted, and colors are well saturated. Again, clearly better than the vanilla model here. When it comes to video recording though, the ultra-wide is a mixed bag. The detail level is excellent, and the dynamic range is respectable. The white balance is clearly off though, resulting in an overly warm and yellowish tint. Selfies are taken with the 10.5 megapixel front-facing cam, which has autofocus. There are two zoom levels, and the phone defaults to the more zoomed in one. The selfies have good detail and nice looking skin tones. So that's the Pixel 8 Pro. It brings a bunch of changes over the previous model, including the flat and extra bright display, the new chipset, and improvements in the cameras. Seven years of software support is really great to have too. And there's a thermometer? Unfortunately, the 8 Pro does fall short of competitors when it comes to the battery life, and its chipset performance also falls behind, both when it comes to raw numbers as well as thermal management. Still, if you can swallow those shortcomings, otherwise the Pixel 8 Pro is a great flagship camera phone that has a lot to offer.
Thanks for watching guys. If you're looking for alternatives to the Pixel 8 Pro, you can check out our reviews of the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max. Let us know what you think and I'll see you on the next one.